بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلوات الله وسلامه على نبينا الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ثم أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير هدى هدى نبينا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثات محدثات في الدين وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار to recap and to go over quickly, briefly the main points of the last session when we talk about the minhaj and the way of the companions رضي الله عنهم we should know that they are a sha'ira from the sha'air of al-islam just as Safa and Marwa is and just as the Kaaba is just as the Masajid are and to honor and to exalt the Sha'air of Islam is a sign that you are mu'min you have taqwa ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَ الْقُلُوبِ as Allah mentioned in the Quran whoever raises up and holds in reverence and he exalts the Sha'air of Allah it's a proof of the taqwa in his heart. Radi Allahu anhum ajma'in. Number two, the scholars, Radi Allahu anhum, took care of giving us nasiha and doing their haq and their wajib. Nahwa sahaba sahaba al kiram. Radi Allahu anhum, in that they wrote books specifically about them so that we'll know who they were and what they did. And at the top of the list are the ulama of al-hadith. And when I say the ulama of al-hadith, and al-hadith, I'm not talking about any particular jam'iyya that you have to be a member of. I'm talking about al hadith those people who work with and by the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no matter who likes it, no matter who dislikes it, al hadith the ulama of al hadith not the fuqaha, not the usubiyun, even though they also did some things as you're going to see inshallah, but the ulama of al hadith, Sayyid Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and Imam Ahmed, and the rest of them, Rahimahumullah ta'ala. And they used to be very upset against those people who cursed the companions from the Rafidah, the Nawasif and the Rawasif, those people who hated the companions, those people who went overboard in al Bayt. Those people who hated Ahl al Bayt, the ulama of the hadith, were tough against them. Point number three, we explained that the Quran and the Sunnah by themselves, both of them, they guide to the Surat al Mustaqim, or was that point number one? They guide to the Sirat al Mustaqim. Point one, two, three is not relevant. They guide by themselves to the Sirat al Mustaqim. Then we gave you some of the virtues of the companions from the Quran. Now we come to the second session, inshallah, and we want to finish everything before Salat al Aisha. The Ibnillah. And now we want to deal with two more points. This first half of the first session, the second session will deal with the virtues of the companions from the Sunnah. And in the second half of this second session, the second half of the second session will deal with the importance of understanding Al-Islam in accordance to, way, to the way they understood it and why and what sense it makes and how it was proven from the Quran and from the Sunnah. And from the Waqir. As it relates to the Sunnah Ikhwani and the virtues of the companions, then obviously there are going to be things, many issues from the Sunnah 
just as there were many issues from the Quran. That's because Allah Azawajal said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa anzalna ilayka al-dhikr li tubayyina linnasi ma nizzila ilayhim we sent down to you the dhikr ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that you will explain and can explain to the people what was revealed to them so those ayat that we read from the Quran is explanation is further elucidated and illustrated and explained in the authentic sunnah walabud lazim wajib has to be and that is from the hikmah of the sunnah the hikmah is the sunnah as he told tabaratu ta'ala the wives of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa thkurna ma yutla alaykunna fi buyuti kunna min ayati lahi wal hikmah tell them Aisha, Hafsa, Um Salama, Um Habiba, Sophia, Sauda, Zainab bin Tujash, Zainab bin Tujhuzayma, Juwayriya, Maymuna. Tell the people, radiyallahu anhunna, what you heard and what you hear from the ayat of Allah, the Quran, and al-hikmah, the sunnah, that we wouldn't know about because we weren't there. What did he do after having relationships with his wife? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam What did he do? We learned that from his wives How did he make the ghusl? Were you there? Hashirullah Did you see the nakedness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Hashirullah No one saw the nakedness of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam After becoming a Nabi Except his wives Radiallahu Anhunna And Ali ibn Abi Talib when he washed the body of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that's the only reason he wasn't there to give the bay'ah to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu he was busy with the taqseer of the body of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam special hurma his body is sacred Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the earth does not eat the bodies of the Anbiya if you were able to dig them up, وَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ You will find that Nabi's body just the way it was when he left this earth. Because the earth and the worms do not decay or eat their bodies. Special. So the sunnah has to come and it's going to come and it has come to expound upon this issue of the companions. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْرُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضُلَالٍ مُبِينٍ He read to them the kitab and hikmah Although before that they were ignorant, they were in balal So the sunnah has mentioned a lot of issues We're going to name a few, mention a few and then get to the second half of the second session because it also needs to be explained From the sunnah is the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu Abu Huraira collected by the Imam Muslim and is the hadith of the Ghuraba that's all you have to write Al Ghuraba that's all you know the hadith Al Ghuraba Abu Huraira said that the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al-Islam bada'a gharibah wa sayyudu gharibah kama bada'a fatuba lil Ghuraba this narration is Sahih Muslim Al-Islam began as a stranger It will return as a stranger Guraba So Tuba Jannah for the Guraba For the strangers Radiallahu anhu At the list At the top of the list When Al-Islam began As we mentioned the other day In the conference The Tawheed was strange What the Quran brought was strange The Sunnah was strange One man is going to be The leader is strange and from what was strange and we didn't mention it, it is how Al-Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu the Quran, the Sunnah, how it raised up the Du'afa and the Masakeen. That was strange. When the lady from Quraysh, from Bani Makhzum, she stole something and they went to Usama ibn Uzayd, get involved so they don't cut her hand off. The Prophet doesn't cut her hand off. He loved Usama ibn Uzayd. Why did they go to Usama ibn Uzayd? Because he was like the grandson of the Prophet ﷺ, like Hassan and Hussein, just like Hassan and Hussein. 
So they want them to make intercession. You just can't go to anyone. You have to go to someone that the person really loves. Your son, your daughter, be a little baby girl. You give her a break more than everybody else. If she starts to fire, you just say, oh. But if your older son starts to fire playing with matches, you hit him in his hand, you put him on punishment. The Prophet became upset, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he told all of them, أَتَشْفَعُونَ فِي حَدَّ مِنْ حُدُودِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ إِذَا سَرِقَ فِيهُمْ الشَّرِيفِ تَرَكُوا وَإِذَا سَرِقَ فِيهُمْ وَإِذَا سَرِقَ فِيهُمْ الضَّعِيفِ أَقَامُوا عَلَيْهِ حَدْ We aim Allah لَوْ سَرِقَتْ فَاتِمَةُ بِنْتُ مُحَمَّدٍ لَقَتَعْتُ يَدَهُ Those people came before you from Ahlul Kitab, Ikhwani, they were destroyed because if a Sharif, noble person with money and position, if they stole, they did a crime, they made a mistake, the people would leave them. Let them go. No penalty. But if a weak scheme were to do it, then they would do the hajj. They would put the penalty on them. They would put them in prison. And I have to say this. The Prophet came with this religion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that raised up the du'a found the masakeen. And the religious people who are on this sunnah should know that more than everyone else. But I have seen here in this country that the masakeen and the du'a found are treated bad by many of the people. It seems as if, as if it's part of the culture. And I know and understand that some of them don't want to do anything. I was in Bangalore, we came out of a restaurant, the brother brought too much to eat, we took the food with us, some guy saw that I was strange, he came to me, he was saying he wanted money, he wanted money, the brother gave him the food. He said, oh, no, no, no. He was saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, he g- give me some money, for the f- some, buy some food, he gave him the food. After he said, oh, no, no, I need money to get somewhere. First he wanted food, when he got the money, he wanted to go somewhere. We know some of them are like that. But that's not your job. The da'if, the miskeen, from the Muslim or the non-Muslim, he's raised up. And why else is Mahatma Gandhi? Why is he respected in the dunya with the non-Muslims in America and the UK? Because the man appeared to be close to the masakeen and the fuqara. A lawyer dressed in the way he dressed, the dunya loves him. Because it's aqidah? No, the man has some characteristics Allahu alam about the reality, but that's what the image is that we received. So the masakeen, inni uharriju al-da'ifain, al mar'a wal yateen. He said, I, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have, I'm, I'm upset, I'm not comfortable about the two weak people, the woman and the orphan. The woman and the orphan. The orphan in our countries are khalas. We eat them, we eat them. La kulum akrim. No one there except Allah for them. And the woman. Even people from the Sunnah. Wa ammal al mawuda tu ida kutilat. Ida suilat bi aydam bin kutilat. She is murdered in jahiriya. Al Islam came, revealed Surah al Nisa. Ahkam of the Nisa. She keeps her name. She doesn't marry you and then she becomes, her name is Sharifa bintu Mahmood. She marries you, she becomes Sharifa and then take your last name. Al-Islam honor turns to keep your last name, you get the inheritance. In Jahiri, if the lady was in her idda, her husband died. If her husband died, the idda for her was, they would leave her in the house for one year, and they would throw a dead carcass, a body of a donkey or a dog, and throw it in the room, and she couldn't wash for one year. And she had to stay like that in mourning for her husband. Can you imagine that? For one year, and the Prophet came with a, a deen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, you can't do that. She can mourn for four months and ten days. لا يحل لمراءة تؤمن بالله ويوم الآخر أن تحد على أحد إلا على الزوج أربعة شهر وعشرة. She can only mourn. No, if she lose her mother, her father, baby, she only can mourn three days. That's it. Meaning after three days she has to pick herself up and start working and getting that busy. But she can be incapacitated for four months and ten days only for her husband. So I say this to the women who are listening right now. That goes to show the tremendous position of the zoj in this being. So the shayan in the point, Ikhwani, is he brought the religion to protect the du'afa, the du'afa. 
So this sunnah was explained to us by those women radiallahu anhum jami'at. From what we find from this sunnah is that hadith about the ghuraba, Sahih Muslim. And then the other narration said, Ya Rasulullah, who are the ghuraba? He said, they are the people who within themselves are righteous when the people go bad. Or the people who, when the people go bad, they make islah to the people. The companions were the first ones to do this. They carried the kerima of a tawheed, and they carried the way of taking al-Islam to the dunya, and contrary as we mentioned to what the people leave, Islam didn't spread by the sword with compulsion. The people saw the Muslims, they saw how they did business, they saw how they dealt with the situation. When Abu Sufyan who was a kafir on that day, radiallahu anhu met Hiraqal, and he wanted to give false propaganda to Hiraqal, Hiraqal asked him from the question, who follows this man? Abu Sufyan said, the fuqara and the masakeen and the du'afa. Hiraqal was from Al Kitab said, wa kadharik al anbiya. That's how the prophets are. They are followed by the weak, the lowly, and the downtrodden. And those companions were from them, radiallahu anhu. And the ones who were rich and powerful, Abu Sufyan and Amr bin Nas and those people, they didn't have any problem with raising these people up. Bilal ibn Rabah. Umar said, Bilal Sayyiduna, a'taquhu Sayyiduna. Bilal is our Sayyid, and our Sayyid freed him. You people heard of Abu Dhar al Ghaffari? Al Ghaffar. Abu Dhar al Ghaffari. Junda. Abu Dhar al Ghaffari. He's known by his kunya. Abu Dhar was a original, an original Arab. The Ghaffar tribe, original Arabs. He said to Bilal ibn Rabah, Ya bin Imra'a, Ya bin Imra'a to that, you son of a black lady. He became upset. They were arguing. He said, Get out of here, you son of a black lady. Like some of us have certain words to describe each other to put them down from their creation. You son of a black lady. Bilal went, he told the Prophet, so I said, look, Abu Dhar said this, said that. Rasulullah said, did you say that, Abu Dhar? Abu Dhar said, yes, ya Rasulullah. He said, inna kimri on fika jahiliya. You a person who has jahiliya in you. At bi umihi. Do you criticize him because of his mother? What do you have to do with his color? Now he look. What did Abu Dhar do? He put his face on the floor, on the dirt. He said, Bilal, Bilal, put your foot on my face. He was powerful, rich. Put your foot on my face, Bilal, for what I did. His false. What did Bilal do? He said, La wallahi. I will not put my foot on the face that has made sajda to Allah. There's a ghuraba. There's a ghuraba. They're not just stories, symbol in the deen of Al-Islam. So that's the first delil from the sunnah. Tuba lil ghuraba. They are in paradise. And another authentic hadith told us that Tuba is a tree in paradise. If you were to ride the fastest animal known, Al-Baraq, that he went on Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, on the Baraq. If you were to ride the fastest animal known, going at the speed of light, it would take you 500 years. If you started at the trunk of the tree, Tuba in Jannah, 500 years to get out of the shade. To get out of the shade, Tuba lil Ghuraba. And you come and you say that they're kuffar. Miskeen, fakir, wretched. The next Dalil Ikhwani from the Sunnah is the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu that was collected by the Imam Muslim. Just put the word Najum, Najum, Najum. Akhi, what is Najum in Arabic? Good job, good job, good job. Shayukh ulama, inshaAllah. Najum, the hadith of Najum. And I'm not going to say Ashabi kan Najum. My companions are like stars. Whichever one you follow, you'll be guided. Although this is important, we're going to come to that. Inshallah. Hadith Mawdu'a. Kadir. He didn't say that. The Hadith of Najum. What is it? An Najum Amaratun Lis Sama. Fayda Zahabatun Najum Atas Sama Matu'ad. 
وانا املت من اصحابي فاذا ذهبت اتى اصحابي ما يعدون واصحابي املت من امتي اذا ذهب اصحابي اتى امتي ما يعدون pay attention ikhwani he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam the stars that are in the sky they are the amana from amin the protectors the stars are the protectors of the sky if the stars go then what the sky has been been promised will happen what was the sky promise ida samaa'u shaqqat wa adinat rabbiha wa huqqat when the sky spun open yawm al-qiyam and it's going to ask permission from Allah can I split open now it's not going to do it on its own as long as those stars in the sky yawm al-qiyam won't be established the stars are the protectors of the sky if the stars go then what the sky was promised is going to happen and I sallallahu alayhi wa sallam am the protector of my companions if I go then what my companions have been promised will happen if I die sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then what my companions were promised will happen fitna al-qatl al-haraj they fought between themselves رضي الله عنه علي معاوية they fought between themselves رضي الله عنه it was fitna and as those scholars used to say Abdullah bin Mubarak and other than him Allah Azza wa Jal protected us from having our swords participate in that battle we didn't kill anyone alhamdulillah so let us protect our tongues about talking about it Ali was zalim Muawiyah was zalim that's a, what are you talking about Muawiyah gets a reward for what he did Ali gets two rewards for what he did Aisha gets one reward Abu Talha one reward Abdullah ibn Zubair one reward they made mistakes إِذَا اجْتَهَدَ حَاكِمٌ وَأَصَابَ فَلُوا أَجْرًا وَأَخْتَى فَلُوا أَجْرًا وَاحِدًا Ali gets two rewards because the haq was with him. We don't have a problem with saying that. The haq was with Ali. Too many dhalils. Ammar ibn Yasir was in the army with Ali رضي الله عنه. And the Prophet told Ammar رضي الله عنه يَا أَمَّارُ تَقْتُلُكَ الْفِئَةُ الْبَاغِيَةِ The oppressive group is going to kill you, Ya Ammar. He knew his death was coming. You're going to be killed by an oppressive group. Ammar was with Ali. So that means Muawiyah said, killed him. Rabbi Allah anhum. Ali said, for me to be taken up to the sky and dropped down to the earth is more beloved than for me to say something Rasulullah didn't say. He said, Muawiyah wallahi. I heard the Prophet say this hadith to Ammar. So that you don't think I'm lying. I'm not going to make up a hadith against the Messenger of Allah. I prefer to be taken up in the sky. Drop down. That's more beloved to me. Muawiyah said, La, la, okay, I believe that hadith, but you're the one who killed them. Because you're the one who made them come out to fight. So you made them. You killed them. Ali is better than Muawiyah in knowledge and position. He's an alim. He said, okay, based on that then, you're saying if he came out with me to fight, I killed him. And that means... Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam killed his uncle Hamza when Hamza came out to fight Quraysh Muawiyah is on the stage Astaghfirullah that's the knowledge I, that's the knowledge of dealing with the religion based upon proofs where the person can't say anything after that what is he going to say now Rabbi Allah anhu so I'm the protector of my companions if I go what they were promised will happen And my companions are the protectors of my ummah. If my companions go, then what my ummah has been promised will happen. Al-Iraq, Palestine, the ikhtilaf, the hatred, the fighting of Islam, the Muslims are being oppressed, all of that as a result of what? We got away from and we divorced ourselves from what the companions were upon. رضي الله عنه. So that's from the proofs from the Sunnah that show the virtues of the companions and the position of the companions that they are the protectors of this ummah. If this ummah holds on to the understanding, this ummah will be protected. If this ummah gets away from the understanding, you're going to have some problems, as you're going to see. From the Adilla Ikhwani, and there are many, 
is the issue of cursing them. Cursing them. The Messenger of Allah told us, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam, La tusabbanna ahada. Don't curse anyone. That's in Abu Dawood. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam, La tusubbu ad-dahar. Fa inna Allah huwa ad-dahar. Don't curse the time. Allah is the time. His name is not time. You can't call yourself Abdul Dahar, Abdul Asr. Can't call yourself Abdul Waqt. Meaning, you kalibu layla wa nahar. Allah makes the night and the day. So the Arabs, what they used to do with a catastrophe happened. He lost his arm, he lost his foot, he lost his wife, lost his mother, he lost all of his money. He would say, curse beyond the time for bringing this catastrophe. Prophet said, don't curse the time. Allow the time. Allah may whatever happened to you happen from his cousin, not the time. So you can't curse the time. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La tusubrih, Fainno min ruhillah. Don't curse the wind. It's from the Spirit of Allah. The tsunami came, it destroyed a lot of the Muslims' lands and lives, property and money. Someone said, Curse of Allah be upon that wind. Curse of Allah be upon those waves. It's from the Amr of Allah. Maybe that you hate it is better for you, Allah. So you can't curse things. They used to curse fever. One of them would get the fever. He'll say, Curse of Allah upon the Humma. That fever is a kafara for you. That toothache is a kafara for you. Whatever you do, you hurt yourself. That is kafara for you. Just be patient. Whatever sins you have, it's going to clean you up. And that's why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to suffer when he was dying. He was dying and he was suffering. He had to bandage his head up, wrap it around. And he would lose consciousness and it was tough. He was sweating. The people were saying, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, as if they were saying, you're going through a lot, but seems like you're having a difficult time. He said, In yu'u'aq birajulayni minkum. I suffer the pain of two men from you because I'm going to be in the maqam al Mahmood cleaning him up. Even the Nabi, no one will get into Jannah by his actions. Even you, Ya Rasulullah, even me. Had it not been for the fact that Allah submerged me in his rahmah, being a Nabi can't get you into Jannah because in Jannah is ma la ra'at, ma la ain ra'at, wa la udin sami'at, wa ma khatara bal bashar. In that Jannah is what no eyes have ever seen, no ear ever heard, no human being has imagined it. And that's why, I've got to make this point, and I don't want to digress. We have to do a better job about learning the du'as of Al Islam. Like the du'a of going into the bathroom and coming out of the bathroom. The Prophet told us when we come out of the bathroom, what should we say? Ghufranaka, simple easy word. So now the question is, Ghufranaka means, oh Allah forgive me. What sin did he commit? He just went into the bathroom. Allah created you like that. What sin? Why did the Prophet seek forgiveness when he came out? Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim says, because the ni'mah to have the ability to go to the bathroom, you can never thank Allah enough for that ni'mah alone. The name of your eyesight, the name of your child, hearing, intelligence, your job, your money. Some of you have nice homes, some of you have a home to live. Just the name of being able to go to the bathroom. Anybody ever suffer from constipation or a lot of gas? You had a lot of gas and you can't get it out. Some people think they're about to catch a heart attack. They go to the hospital thinking they're going to get a heart attack. Doctor says you just have gas. Take this. When I became a Muslim, the Ahna told me over there, Abu Hanifa, radiallahu anhu, I'm saying radiallahu anhu, Abu Hanifa prayed Salat, al- he prayed for 40 years Salat without making wudu. What? 40 years? Hawla wa la quwata illa billah. So we say, Ghufranaka when we come out of the bathroom. So the point here is, whatever you're dealing with, la to subbanna ahada, don't curse anyone. La to subbuddiq, fa inna hu yuqidukum nis salat. Don't curse the rooster. He wakes you up for salat. Now the Muslim lives next door to the masjid and the adhan goes off and he says, I wish he would shut up. Why do they have to put the adhan on the microphone? Why don't they just leave it inside of the masjid? 
Don't curse the rooster. Ikhwani, la tusubbu shaytan. Wa ta'awudhu billahi min sharrihi. Don't curse shaytan. Seek refuge in Allah from his evil. Shaytan. Why? Laysa al-mu'min bi ta'an wa la la'an. The believer is not a person who always says, la'nat Allah, la'nat Allah. And he's not the person who makes a ta'an. You're ignorant. Your father was just a shoemaker. Your father, all he did was, he used to clean the toilets. Your father, he was a garbage man. He picked up the garbage. So what? That's a time. The movement is not like that. So we have a group of brothers back in Birmingham, and I hear that some of them are Mumbai, Bangalore, some of these brothers who go overboard. When you don't agree with them, when you don't agree with them, they make dua. May Allah break your back. May Allah... If you don't come to what we're saying and you don't take what Shaykh so-and-so said, may Allah break your neck. Is that how the Dawah of Al-Islam is? The movement is not like that. Now if we can't curse the wind, we can't curse the chicken, we can't curse the shaitan, we can't curse the time, we can't curse all of these things. What about the Sha'air of Al-Islam? Can you curse the hijab? Can you curse the masjid? And can you curse the companions? Khalid ibn Walid had an argument with some of the companions. And Khalid ibn Walid accepted Islam later on, and he cursed one of the companions. So the Prophet said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in this hadith, and this is the point, Sahih Muslim is the next proof, Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Abu Huraira and Abu Sa'id al Khudri. Sahih Muslim. Khalid, this is the story behind that hadith. He had an argument. He cursed him. Rasulullah became upset. And he told Khalid. And the rest of the people came to Islam later on. لَا تُسُبُّ أَصْحَابِ فُوَلَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ لَوْ أَنْفَقَ أَحَدُكُمْ مِثْلُ أُحْدَ الذَّهَبَ مَا بَلَغَ مُدَّ أَحْدِهِمْ وَلَا نَصِيفًا Don't curse my companions. I swear by Allah, if one of you, ya Khalid, if you, Khalid ibn Walid, if one of you people who accepted Islam later on were to spend all of Uhud in gold, it wouldn't equal half of a mud of what Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and the rest of those companions who were Muslims before Fath Mecca. Khalid ibn Walid al is safe from the suyuf of Allah, as the Prophet said. He's a sword from the swords of Allah. That's what the Prophet said. He's from the awliya of Allah. Khalid ibn Walid was at the head of the army. He went to the enemy and the enemy left some food around as Al-Imam Ahmed narrated. The enemy left some food around. The companion said, La, Khalid, Amir al muminin in that journey, we better not eat it. It has poison. This is a trick. This is khida. It's tricking us. Don't eat it. Khalid didn't care. He said, Allah is with us. Man yansurullah. In Tansurullah and Surukum, we said the Abdanukum, we read the ayat to him. If you help Allah, Allah help you and establish a fever. And he ate the poison. And everyone was looking. Is Khalid gonna die? And Khalid just was walking around. When the people saw that from the Amir and the Jihad, they were ready to go. Where they at? Where they at? They want to see the people. And that's the meaning of Khwani that the companions used to say to the leaders of the non Muslims, the Rasul of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say to the leader of the non-Muslim Here's the letter From the messenger of Allah telling you to embrace Islam You still will remain over your people And then the man would say something negative to the companion The companion would say I just came from a group of people Radiallahu anhum Who love death more than you people love your life Now these are the people you're about to deal with And I'm giving you a chance And I'm trying to be nice to you you are about to meet a group of people who love death more than you love life. How are you going to deal with that type of individual? But now we have the other situation. We have al wahim Mal wahim Ya Rasulullah, what is a wahim Hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul mawt. Wahim will get you. All the people come. And you'll have one. You'll love the dunya and you'll hate the death. So that hadith, the Khalid ibn Walid, Khalid, because you came to Islam after Fath Mecca. If you spend Uhud, it's not like anyone else. And you're the safe from the Sayyuf of Allah. What about everybody else? Us. If that's Khalid ibn Walid's situation. So that goes to show us why the companions are not just nice stories, regular people. The companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, 
are a symbol, apex of the deen. From the proofs, and this is the last one that we're going to give from the ahadith, and there are a lot of them. The hadith in which he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the authority of our mother Aisha, Um Abdullah. Her kunya was Um Abdullah, although she didn't have any children. So even if you're not married, you should take a kunya. It's from the Sunnah. And even if your wife didn't have a child, you should take a kunya. You're not married, take a kunya. It's the Sunnah. The Prophet used to give kunyas to kids. And it's Ibn Malik had a little brother, and the little brother had a bird as his pet. And the Prophet used to see the companions, and when you went missing, if you went missing, he would say, Where's so and so? Where's so and so? Too many examples of this. Where's Thabit ibn Qais? Where's Ali ibn Abi Talib? Oh, he's suffering, his eyes are messed up. Where's Thabit ibn Qais? They go and look, Thabit, Rasulullah asking for it. Oh, tell him I'm destroyed. Allah revealed the ayah. La tarfa wa aswata kum fawqa sotin nabi. Don't raise your voices above the voice of Rasulullah. And I'm very loud. That ayah was revealed because of me. The man go, Ya Rasulullah, he won't come out because of the ayah. Rasulullah so sends Rasul back and say, Tell him that ayah is not from him. He's from Ahl Jannah. And then he will come out. The point is, people will go missing. And he start asking, Where is he at? Even the little kid. Anis ibn Omadi. Where is your little brother, Anis? I don't even see him around. He doesn't come to the masjid. I don't see him. Anis say, Ya Rasulullah, his little bird died. His bird died and he's sad. And he refuses to come out of the house. Rasulullah said, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman Ali, Abdurrahman ibn Aw, the Mubashirin, the Ashab al Mubashirin, big men. Come, let's go visit our brother. He said, Bidillah. Big men. They went into the house. The Prophet, when he saw the boy, he said to him, وسلم, Ya Aba Umair, Mada Fa'ala al Nughayr. He made a nursery rhyme. Oh, Umair, Abu Umair, what did your bird do? The boy started laughing, and then he became okay. All of these people have visited him, and now he comes out and he starts to play with the other people. That's our Nabi and our Rasul, وسلم, with the dua fa. Anyway, the last hadith. Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha said that the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam خير ناس القر الذي أنا في The best people are the generation that I am in it. There are a lot of narrations. خير القر الذي بعثت في The best generation is the one that I was sent in. And the meaning of the best generation here is from all the children, Adam's children. The companions are the best human beings, only after the Anbiya and the Rasul. So those are some of the hadith, and there are a lot more. As for the hadith, اِفْتَرَقَتْ الْيَهُودُ عَلَىٰ إِحْدَ وَالسَّبْعِينَ اِفْتَرَقَتْ الْيَهُودُ اِفْتَرَقَتْ الْنَصَارَ الْيَهُودُ عَلَىٰ إِحْدَ وَالسَّبْعِينَ فِرْقَ وَاِفْتَرَتْ النَّصَارَ عَلَىٰ ثِمَّتَيْنَ وَالسَّبْعِينَ فِرْقَ وَاِفْتَرَتْ النَّصَارَ عَلَىٰ ثِمَّتَيْن قيل ما الواحدة يا رسول الله قال الذي على مثل ما أنا الذي على مثل ما أنا عليه اليوم وأصحابي ما أم is going to break up into seventy three sects they all will be in the hellfire except one which one the one that's doing what I'm doing today and my companions there's a lot of اختلاف between the scholars concerning the authenticity of this hadith I believe that it's Hassan لغيره إن شاء الله but we're not going to mention it to you because there is a lot of كلام in it. But it's one of the strongest hadith in terms of the proof. The one that is doing, the people, the group that's doing what I'm doing today, and my companions. Now, if I need the second half of the second session. What we mentioned is the Quran and the Sunnah. And now we're going to give you some examples from the waqi and the reality of the light. First thing, and I need you to write some of these things down. Inshallah. The first thing that we see concerning the companions of the Prophet وسلم, is that number one, A, if one of them says something, you have to write it quickly in your own way, you don't even have to write the whole, the whole sentence. If one of them gives a position, he takes a position in the deen, and there's no other companion who went against that, you don't find any other delil that went against that, then what he said or did is a delil. 
even if you don't find even if you don't find a hadith saying it Abdullah and there's too many examples I'll give you one of the famous ones Abu Huraira Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu used to cut his beard when he wanted to perform Hajj or Umrah in preparation for Hajj and Umrah anything that went beyond the Qabda he would cut his beard he would trim his beard in the presence of the other companions and you don't find a single narration where a companion said what are you doing? someone would have seen Abdullah ibn Umar doing that at the time of Umar or Hajj and someone would have said something and that would have come to us but because you don't find anyone saying anything we can say the cutting of the beard is from the Sunnah as the ulama of al-usul say because there's no other companion going against what he said and it's not conceivable that someone would be doing something during that time and the people know about it and we won't get one narration about that particular issue so if they say something or do something and there's no one else going against them then there's a hujjah, a delil but if they say something or do something and others go against them or one other go against them it could be a lot of one then we have to look at the delil is with who? Aisha said that Rasulullah didn't see Allah. Abdullah bin Abbas said that Rasulullah that Aisha said that Rasulullah did see Allah. Aisha said my hair is gonna stand up from what Abdullah bin Abbas is saying. The hap was with Abdullah bin Abbas because the Prophet said, Ra'aytu Rabbi al I saw my Lord last night. But she wasn't totally wrong. He didn't see Allah with the Basr al eye and the head, so on with the heart. Because you will not be able to see Allah as long as you're in this dunya with your eyes. So the point is, some will say this, some will say that. It's not an argument, it's not a proof. No one is a proof after the Prophet وسلم, except when the Dalil is with him. So make that distinction. If they say something and no one else is against them from the companions, that's the Dalil. Second, second, as I mentioned early, if one of them says something about the ilm al ghayb and it comes to you in an authentic trans- in transmission sentence, then it has the hukum of being to the Prophet. He probably told them that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they would never ever have the nerve or the audacity to make ijtihad in the ghaybiyat the way we do. We make ijtihad and we talk about the ghayb without any knowledge. Because they are a symbol of the deen. They are a symbol of the deen because they are high level of al Islam. They are not going to make ijtihad in those issues. They used to be afraid to make ijtihad in fiqh issues. They are sitting with each other and someone would come and ask, what's this issue? Halal or haram? They will say, ask him, ask him, ask him, ask him, ask him, until it comes all the way around. So you think he's going to make ijtihad in the Ghaybiyat and the Aqidah, the most important issue. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said about Ayatul Kursi. Wasiya Kursi yuhu samawatu al ard Allah's Kursi extends beyond the heavens and the earth. He said that the Kursi is the footstool of Allah. It's the place of the two feet. It's what he said. There's no hadith that says that. And that's an authentic statement. So we believe, based upon that, that the kursi, ayatul kursi, is the first tool of Allah. But we dare not be like the Christians who make ijtihad in the ghaybiyat, and they draw pictures of the anbiya, and they draw pictures of the malaik, and they even draw pictures of God Almighty in their opinion. Long blonde hair, blue eyes, he's sitting on a big chair, and he's dangling his feet. A'udhu billah, a'udhu billah. We're not going to do that, but Allah's kursi, the kursi, ayatul kursi, and the similar tool of the kursi in comparison to the arsh, as you all know, as you all know, is like the bangle, the bracelet that you throw in the ocean. Allah yahdik. Kul amin ya akhi, kul amin Allah yahdik. After that, the next point that I want you to write as well is concerning the understanding of the companions and the importance of it. Ayat 
number 195 in Surah Al-Baqarah. You go back, you read it later on. Allah commanded the Muslims and He said, Tabarak wa ta'ala wa anfiqu fi sabiillahi wa la tulqu bi aydikum ila tahduka. Pay attention. Spin in the cause of Allah. And do not, and do not cause your hands to lead to your own destruction. Some of the companions were, commi- were, were performing jihad. And there was a man from the companions who encouraged the people to get up and to go and fight. And this is from the Sunnah. And when the people were tired and they needed some rest and they were in the battlefield, this man himself, he ran and he threw himself into the enemy to try to open up the door. So the enemy killed him. Some of the tabi'een, they said, Eh, laqad ahlaka nafsahu. He has destroyed himself. And Allah said in the Quran, لا تلقوا بأيديكم من التهلكة. Don't destroy your own selves. ولا تقتلوا أنفسكم إن الله كان بكم رحيما. Don't kill yourselves. Allah have mercy upon you. So they use this ayah. Abu Ayyub al Ansari, رضي الله عنه, who the Prophet stayed with when he went to Medina, صلى الله عليه وسلم, and he put the Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم, above him in the house. Because he didn't want him and his wife to be walking, disturbing the Prophet. And him and his wife used to walk around very, 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 very quiet out of respect of the revelation, out of respect of the Sunnah. Whereas we, the person tells you the Sunnah, he says, Ah, it's just a Sunnah. It's just a Sunnah. Not, not Abu Ayyub. He respected the Sunnah. He put it up. Abu Ayyub said to those tabi'in who said he killed himself, he said, You people are understanding this ayat other than the way Allah wants it to be understood. This ayat was revealed for us, the Ansar. When the Prophet came to Al Medina, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we supported him, we fought with him, we gave him our money, we gave him everything. And then when Islam started spreading and we started conquering people, there were those from amongst us who started to become busy with their trade and their animals and their family and their hadiqa, their gardens. So Allah revealed this ayah telling us, Give in the cause of Allah. أَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُرْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ مِنَ التَّهْرُكَ Give in the cause of Allah and don't be the cause of your own destruction with your own hands by not giving فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ ما نقص مال قط من صدقة. Your money was never decreased because of صدقة. Someone came and gave Aisha رضي الله عنه a sheep. Gave her a sheep as a gift, not صدقة. A gift. This is for you and the Messenger of Allah's family. Aisha gave it out to the fuqara and the masakin. But she left the shoulder for her husband صلى الله عليه وسلم because she's a smart lady and the lady who is smart she knows I gotta be sensitive to my husband's feelings. He doesn't like this relative to come to the house. He doesn't like this kind of food. He loves that kind of food. So the good lady is sensitive like Aisha رضي الله عنه. She left that. Rasulullah came and said what happened to the Aisha? She said someone gave us a sheep. What you do with the sheep? Well, I don't see a sheep. She said, I gave it all out in sadaqah. Nothing remains except the shoulder. That's the only thing we have left. He said, La Aisha, bal baqiya kullu shay illa al kettle. No Aisha. Everything went except the shoulder. Everything remains with us except the shoulder. The shoulder is still with us. And after we eat the shoulder, what happens with food is going to happen. That's, that's khalas. But that sadaqah that went out, that's going to be with us. Yom al So he used to tell Bilal, Ya Bilal, infaq yunfaq alik. Bilal gave money and Allah was spinning on you. And Bilal was a free slave with no money, living in the masjid at one time. So don't think because you're poor, or you're a student, and you don't have money, that you shouldn't give. That's from shaitan. That will cause you to be destroyed. So the point here is, the tabi'un ikhwani understood the ayat one way and the companions understood it the correct way 
You can use this ayah. Don't kill yourselves with your own hands. Don't blow yourself up. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't go out and commit zina and then get HIV AIDS from one of these ladies. You can use that ayah for that. You can use it. It fits that. But the reason that the ayah was revealed was what the companions understood. And there are too many examples like that, Ikhwani, in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Ayat number 93. Look what happened. And we'll almost finish here, inshaAllah. Umar radiallahu anhu heard that there were a group of people drinking khamar. And they were drinking khamar using the Quran to show the permissibility of drinking khamar. Everyone here knows that khamar is haram. The Bedouin knows khamar is haram. The new Muslim knows khamar is haram. Hindus know that Muslims know that khamar is haram. We all know that khamar is haram. How could these people who are there with the companions use the Quran to say that khamar is halal? So when Umar heard about it, he went, he said, what is this I'm hearing that you people are drinking khamar and you're using the Quran? They say, yes, Amir al Allah said in this ayah that I just gave you brothers, ليس على الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات جناح فيما تعيموا إذا ما اتقوا ثم آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات ثم اتقوا وآمنوا ثم اتقوا وأحسنوا والله يحب المحسنين. This is the ayah. There is no blame on those from amongst you who believe and you have taqwa. There is no blame in what you eat, what you drink. There is no blame. As long as you believe, you do righteous works, and you have taqwa. And then you believe, and you have taqwa. And then you believe, and you have ihsan. You do ihsan to your walidain, ihsan to your neighbor. And Allah loves those who are the muhsineen. So the ayah, according to what those people understood, said, you can eat anything, drink anything, as long as you have iman, and you do righteous works. Allah said, listen, and listen carefully. This ayat was revealed because some of the companions, after the last ayat of khamar was revealed, yes, aluna ka al khamari wal maisil qul fihi ma itmu wa manafi wa nas wa itmu ma akbar. You can still drink it though. You can still drink it. La taqrubu salat wa antum sakara hatta taalamu ma taqulun. Don't come to the salat when you're drunk. Second ayat, you can drink it, but hold off until after salat al isha. And then the last ayat stated that khamar was from the rich and the amal of the shaitan fashtani Stay away from it. Haram. Then they went and threw it in the street. Umar said, the ayat that you people are using was revealed because some of the companions in the last ayat, they said there were some people from amongst the companions who participated in the battle of Badr and the battle of Uhud and they died before the third and last ayat was revealed making khamar haram so they died and inside of their stomach was khamar so what's going to happen to them? مَنْ شَرِبَ الْخَمْرَ فِي الدُّنْيَا لَنْ يَشْرِبْهَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ whoever drinks it in the dunya won't drink it in the hereafter all of those ahadith what's going to happen to them? Allah revealed this ayah, there's no blame on those people who fought jihad and they died before khamar was haram for what they did. As long as they did believe, amina, wa amilu salihah, the taqwa al isan. Umar said, now if I hear that you people are drinking khamar after this, I'm going to do the hajj on you. I'm going to deal with you. So it was a sincere and legitimate mistake. But the companions understood the meaning of the ayah. There are so many other ayahs, Ikhwani, but I decided to make the last three points or two points. The importance of the understanding of the companions, the khawarij, when they left the ruling of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and they said that the companions were kuffar, and they wanted to fight against the companions because they thought they were better and more righteous than the companions. Abdullah bin Abbas said, Ya Ali, send me to them, I want to talk to them. Ali said, I'm afraid for you. Why? Because the Khawarij and people who think like that, they don't hold blood of people sacred. They'll murder the messenger. They'll murder the innocent. These people we have now, Al-Qaeda, and their leaders, and I'll mention their names. 
Abu Ayman, Ayman al zawari and Usama bin Laden, their religion is the religion where they do not hold anything sacred. You're the messenger. The messengers are not killed. The man came to the prophet and his mustache was like this, the British, you know the handlebars on the bike. Rasulullah said to him, who told you to do that? Who told you? He said, Rabbi, my lord from Persia. My lord from Persia. Rasulullah said, Wa Rabbi amarani bi i'fa al-liha wa taqseer al-shawar. And my lord told me to leave the beard and to trim the mustache. And had it not been for the fact that messengers are not killed, I would kill you. Because the man was very disrespectful and arrogant and nasty. But he established the Rasul is not killed. But the Qa'id and the people like that, they kill innocent people. So Abdullah ibn Abbas said, don't worry about me. He went, he put on a nice jubba, and it was red. And when they saw him, he said when he came to them, he can hear them making dhikr of Allah. It sound like bees. For so much thicker, they had big black marks, they had bald heads, they had on their knees were burnt, on their fingers it was burnt, their eyes were black from not sleeping, salat, as the Prophet told us, Yahkir ahadukum salatu in the salatihi, khusiyamu in the siyami. You look at your ibad as being small. When they saw him, they said, Marhaban to the cousin of Rasulullah. First thing they said, why are you wearing it? Why, why are you looking like that? You're from the people of the dunya. He said, I received this to the, from the Messenger of Allah as a gift. The Prophet gave me this. And I used to wear it for eight. He said, now what is the problem that you people had with the cousin of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the husband of his wife, of his daughter? You think he's going to marry his daughter, Fatima Zahra? to someone who doesn't deserve her? His cousin, his daughter, the first to embrace this land, and the one who all of the companions are pleased with and behind him, and none of them are here with you. That's from the fiqh of the one who the Prophet took him like this and said, Allahumma taqifu ta'wil al And in another narration, ta'wil kitabi. Teach him the interpretation of your book. Divine Dua. That's his fiqh. He's the cousin. Silat al-Rahm. Nasab. He married him to his daughter. Is anyone here going to marry your daughter, Ikhwani, to someone who doesn't deserve her? And you think the Prophet would? And all of the companions are with him, and not a single one is with you? And then he went on to explain their situation. I don't want to get into what their weak points were, but he destroyed their argument and almost half or a third of the army came back with him. So the point here is, he said, they are the companions and none of them are with you. The fact they're not with you is an indication. Did the companions do this? If they didn't do it, then you shouldn't do it. If they did it, then we should do it. It's as simple as that. Second and the last Dalil, and the Allah, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, when Abu Musa al Ash'ari saw the people in the masjid, circles, 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 and the Amir of the Majlis would say, say Alhamdulillah, they would say hundred, Alhamdulillah hundred times, Alhamdulillah hundred times, La ilaha illallah hundred times. Abu Musa went and told Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and there's no companion with more statements about the minhaj than Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud went to them and said, hey you people, what are you doing? I advise all of you to take those pebbles, to take those dhikr beads, take those pebbles and use them to count your, de- your, your sins. Because I guarantee you Allah won't cause your good deeds to be lost. He said there, pointed to the houses, the Hujurat. There are the homes of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi The vessels that he used to use are still intact. He just died recently. His vessels are still there. And 
his companions are all over mutawafirun there are so many of them all over and none of them are here with you the man said out of sincerity Ya Aba Abdurrahman Abdullah bin Mas'ul Aba Abdurrahman we only want it good we only want to do good zikr of Allah he said and how many people who want to do good they don't reach it they don't get it just because of their ikhlaq alone but no knowledge not following the sunnah not following the companions the narrator of this hadith he said on the day of Nahrawan when the companions were following the khawarij the majority of the people in those cities, in those circles, were from those people. Those people who were fighting us on the day of Nahrawan, the Khawarij were fighting Ali and the companions, they were sitting, they were the ones in that masjid. So the scholars say, this is the nature of bid'ah. It starts off small, and then it grows into something big. It starts off as a pebble, and then it grows into a sword. A pebble for the dhikr of Allah. And then it grows into a sword to spill the blood of an institution in the deen. Oh, it's just his birthday. Let's just take this day to honor him on this particular day. And now it becomes a part of the deen. If you tell someone, I'll give you a thousand pounds just to prove to me that Dalil, he was born on Rabi Athani on the 12th. Just give me a Dalil. I'll give you a thousand pounds. He's not going to try to bring a thousand. He's going to say, you're Wahhabi. You don't love Rasulullah. If you tell the people don't make dua to Rasulullah, you're Wahhabi. You don't love Rasulullah. Is that scholastic? So now the Milad has become the religion. He thinks it's from the deen. And that's how all innovations are. So the companions, the companions, the khwani, the minhaj is to follow the way of the Prophet وسلم, and to follow the way of the Prophet tenaciously they have been blessed the Tabi'een came to Zayd ibn Arqam and they said Zayd ibn Arqam laqad ra'ayta khayran kathir you saw a lot of good Zayd you saw the message of Allah you prayed behind him and you made jihad fi sabirillah tell us who are the people of Ahlul Bayt is his wife from Ahlul Bayt Sayyid Bukhari Muslim so the point they said, you saw a lot of good. You saw him. You pray behind him. We have our Imam here, Rabbi Rahman. May Allah protect him. He reads the Quran well, mashallah. But does his recitation compare to the recitation of the Nabi of Al Islam? We never got a chance to hear his qira'a. Can you imagine? No one's qira'a is better than his. You have a problem right now, you're suffering right now from a problem. You may come to me. I may not have the answer for it. I may not even support you the way you want me to support you. But if the Prophet was here, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you could just go to his house. Ya Rasulullah, this is my issue. He'll make dua for you. He'll sit down with you, give you light, give you light. The young boy, like you guys, he wasn't married. Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to make zina. He had a cross. Give me permission to make zina. All of the people looked at him. How can I say, hey, what are you doing? They were ready to get him. What are you doing? Embarrassing his father and his brothers, his uncles. How can you say that in public? The prophet told those people, take it easy. Hey, do you want that to happen to your mother? No. To your aunties? No. To your sisters? No. The people as well. They don't want it to happen to their mothers, their aunties, their sisters. And then he took them and he made dua for him. May dua that Allah take that thing that's in the shabab when they're young and they can't get married. It's a fitna. And as a result of that, the shab gets caught in the grasp of pornography or masturbation. A girl or a boy. Now, I don't want to be disrespectful, but it's the ha. During the time of the Prophet, you visit him and he'll help you. Zayd ibn Arqam, you saw him, you prayed behind them and you made jihad. Because they have a special position in this religion. And we can't say that. So with that being the case, Ikhwani, let us do our best, inshallah, to try to pattern our lives after them. Last thing, we're done here. Before I open up the floor for discussion, or allow the organizers to do what's next, I just want to make mention of something that I saw to show you the importance of this issue of being really sanity. Because I see strange things from Al-Hadid. I see strange things from Al-Hadid. 
I see other hadith people not praying behind Hanafis and Diobandis saying things that are not from the deen. Companions were not like that. Uthman ibn Affan was under siege by the Khawarij and he couldn't come out of his house. And some of the companions came and said, you are the Khalifa to Mu'mineen and their Imam. And the Imam of Al-Fitna is praying, the one who is helping the people keep you under siege. Should we go and get him? Uthman said, no. As-Salat khayru al-Mawdu'. Salat is the best thing that you can do. Pray behind them. And the companions used to pray behind them along with the other people. And they were the people of Al-Bida, the Khawarij. Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi used to kill people. He cut off the head of Abdullah ibn Zubair, the first child born in Medina after the Hijrah. His father was Zubair ibn Awam, his mother is Hafsa, the daughter of Abu Bakr, who used to go out with her girdle, bringing the food to Rasulullah and her father before they made Hijrah. He killed that man and cut his head off. And then told his mother, Hafsa, told his mother, Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, come. They went to get her. She said, I'm not going. And she was blind. He said, go back and tell her if she don't come, I'm going to personally come and grab her by her hair and drag her here. That's Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Taqafi. And the companions prayed behind him in the salah. And you don't pray behind the deal, Bundy. And what does it do? It does what we told you not to do about cursing people. وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْرُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيُسُبُّونَ اللَّهِ عَدْوًا عَدْوًا وَبِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Don't curse the gods of those people who worship other than Allah and as a result of that they curse Allah. So when you act like that they hate us and they hate our da'wah. I was in Bangalore in a big, big, nice masjid and I heard that the imam said some terrible things about Alul Hadith. So I met him, talked to him, he was kind to me. I avoid telling him I'm from Alul Hadith. I heard the reason why he said that about Anul Hadith is because of these types of statements and what we do. The companions pray behind the people of innovation as long as that innovation doesn't take you outside of Al-Islam. The other thing is, the way of the companions. The companions in Khwani, when they used to make Salah, they used to take the Sutra. This is something we don't see very much for many of the brothers in this masjid. The sutra is wajib. The sutra is for you to put something in front of you. So when you make sajda, they said when he made sajda, it was enough room for a small sheet to walk between his head and his sutra. So you shouldn't be right up on the sutra, nor should you be far away. This way, the jinn won't come in front of you, inshallah, and the believers will know to walk around you. And he commanded, if any of you prays, pray to a sutra. And he prohibited if you pray, then don't pray to other than a sutra. And if you pray in the desert, in his house, wherever, he took a sutra. Umar radiallahu anhu used to sit, when the person didn't have a sutra, he would sit on his way out of the masjid, he would sit and wait for the person finished salah, then he would tell them that hadith. You have to take a sutra because the Prophet told you it's part of the salah. It's part of sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. It's part of that. And if the person takes a sutra, or he comes late and the Imam's sutra is your sutra. The Imam has a sutra. Once the Imam finish and you came and you missed the rakah, two rakahs, you get up to complete. It is not from the sunnah to move up. Because we don't have a single hadith that the companions did that. We don't have a single hadith that one of them after missing salat, they moved like that. So if they didn't do it, we shouldn't do it. Unless you're in the way where the people are going to walk. That was permissible for you to get out of the way. But to think that after you finish you have to take a sutra, they didn't do that. That's why there are two books of Khwani that are extremely important and they are downstairs. Both of them have the same name and it's called Kitab al-Musannaf. Kitab al-Musannaf. Who knows who authored those two books? A hundred pounds. Hold on, I was going to give you a hundred pounds, I was going to give you a you. Can you get the next one? The first author, both books are Kitab al Musannaf, not Musannif. Musannif means a book. Musannaf, Musannif means the author. Musannaf is the book. 
The first one is one of the greatest scholars in Al-Islam, Al-Imam Abdul Razak al-Sanani, the Imam of Al-Imam Ahmed. And he became a Shia. And he's Thiqa. He became a Shia. But what did it mean that he's a Shia? It meant that he just liked and felt Ali had more fadail than Abu Bakr and Umar. That's what the Shia was a long time ago. He never cursed anyone else. He just felt Ali was more virtuous. There was more ahadith for Ali, more ayat for Ali. So he was a Shia. And the Imam al Nasai was accused of being a Shia in his work. So that's one author. The other one is Al Imam Ibn Abi Shaiba. Ibn Abi Shaiba. Both of them have a book called Kitab al Musannaf. And why, what's that book for? About 18 volumes. That book is concentrating on what the companions did in their ibadat. It brings some hadith in it from the Prophet, but the reason they put that book together is so that the Muslims would know what the companions did in the ibadat of Al-Islam. When they came into the masjid and he's the first person in the new line, what did the companions do? Did they start from the right, the middle, or the left? You read that book. And any student of knowledge who's really a student of knowledge, he has to refer back to that book and deal with that book and have that book. And there are other issues, but we're going to stop here inshallah. And may Allah Azza wa accept it from all of us and help it to be beneficial in our muazin of hasanat yawm al and may he make the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam beloved to us and connect us to them yawm al and raise us up in their zumrah and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this ummah from the distance that we have between ourselves and the application and the understanding of the companions and put that far far away هذا وصلى الله وسلم على النبينا وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته